everyone, it's Jessica and I have a really fun double page layout to share with you today. I am creating today's layout as part of the mystery envelope challenge with my friends in the Makers with Heart group. And this month the envelope was sent out by Amanda from over at Crafting with Amanda. Now she has sent these two pieces of paper that basically are pattern pieces of paper she created herself by random stamping with the February stamp of the month. And in her rule, she says that the only rule that we have to follow is that we have to create our own pattern paper or stamped paper. We can either use the one she sent or make our own. Now, I have this brand new stamp set sitting on my desk. It's from the March and April catalog, which is coming out March 1st. It's called Happy Snail Trails, and I love it. I just absolutely love it. I thought it would be really funny to use it with these uh, pictures here that I took last summer um, from a run that I do uh, near my house. So I have a loop that I do outdoors down our road and then back down some country roads. And I took these pictures with the intention of just kind of scrapbooking that daily event that I do and where it goes. So I'm going to follow this layout here from the Make It From Your Heart Volume 6 book. And I think I'm going to need to actually modify it just a little bit though. Uh, based on the pictures that I have, I think, I, well, I'm going to add one more even plus a flip flap. Um, I'm going to use both of these over here on the left hand page. And then for the right side, um, yeah, I've got different orientations. So I think I'm going to try maybe a little bit like this, but still keep the papers and the circles the same. I'm pretty sure I can still fit those three circles over to the side um, over here. I'll just have to cut them at a smaller size than what the pattern calls for. Now, looking at the colors in my pictures, I pulled a couple of cardstock colors just to kind of get my brain going here. I think I'm going to use Journey, Jade, Peach, and Rosy. And I'm looking at the Journey. I think that matches well with the sky. There is a lot of green for the Jade. And then my shirt has that rosy color in it. And then I thought maybe Peach is an accent somehow, but we'll see how I manage to fit that in. So I've already cut a couple of pieces here. Um, I've got that, that jade green pattern paper um, that is from one of the Mixin collections. And I think I have enough left on that scrap from my Cricut that I can cut three circles on it for my right hand side. And then the pattern calls for this little one inch strip here that's gonna go across um, over that bigger piece of cardstock. And I think that's where I'm gonna do my stamping and create, create my own pattern paper. So I'll flip my Versamat over so I can have that spongy foam side that's really great for stamping. And I really love this one snail image on here. It's just kind of like looking down on it, the back side of the snail, and then it has a couple of really pretty flowers off to the side. And I thought that, that it would be really pretty to use that rosy color and just random stamp the snails on this one inch piece. Now, um, in retrospect, it would have been easier just to random stamp a bigger piece of cardstock and then trim it down to the size that I needed. It was kind of hard to, you know, twist and turn that stamp and get it in a way that I liked it on a little one inch piece like that. But um, I did end up with this one here that I really liked. So I'm going to go ahead and edge distress it with that same color ink. And then I trimmed it up just to kind of, you know, some of it's going to be hidden behind that circle anyway. And since I really liked that one pattern that I created, I went ahead and just kind of trimmed it where I could so that way I could make it work for both sides of my layout. Now, once I started putting all the photos down and then, you know, that circle goes there, there wasn't as much of that stamped pattern paper that really showed. And I was kind of sad about that because that was the point of the mystery envelope challenge. And I really liked it. I thought it was cute and you couldn't really see the snails. So I think I'm going to bump this 4x6 photo up just a little bit. I kind of play with the pace placement a little bit, but I do decide that I like it just about right there. Now, as I was looking at this, I felt like my circles needed a little something to help define them. And so I'm going to do some hand stitching on this layout. I haven't done that in a while. And um, you know, when I go a longer stretch without doing it, I can definitely start to feel um, like a little itch to do it. I'm like, I really want to add that in. So what I like to do, especially for these size circles, is take my thin cuts and I just grab the next smallest size and I use it as a template to draw a circle onto my um, a circle onto my other circle. And then that way I can use it as a guide to punch the holes with my piercing tool. 
Um, and then I definitely spent a little bit of time uh, going around and stitching both those three smaller circles and then the one larger one. All right, so after my stitching was done, I went ahead and took all of those stamped snail images and I spent a little time with my coffee and my markers coloring them in. I love using the tri-blend markers because they make it so easy to do just really beautiful shading. Um, and I am not an expert colorer by any means, but um, it just kind of makes it foolproof. And so those ended up being really adorable. Um, I didn't have any peach colored paper in this layout after all, but I did use that coral colored tri -blend marker and I thought that that was the way that I could kind of bring that little pop of peach in. I thought that it played well with that rosy color that I have in the cardstock that I'm matting my photos in. So I'm just going to spend some time, a lot of time actually, like fussing with the placement of my embellishments. They're all so cute and it's kind of like, uh, what am I going to put together and where is it going to go? Um, I do really love that one snail here, but she's facing to the right. And so I thought it would be kind of weird to have it over on the right hand side of the page. So I'm going to kind of see if I can make a little embellishment cluster over on the left hand page so I can use that one snail. That way it looks like she's heading to the middle of the layout. And actually this particular cluster here just kind of came together very quickly. I was pleased with this one. It didn't take too much fussing the way that the other points of my embellishments did. Um, so I'm going to leave that like that and then come back and mess around a little bit more over here before I finally get everything figured out. Um, and then I had these two little pieces left, that rainbow and that other snail, and I thought maybe I would put them up on top of my 4x6 photo on the left-hand side. Okay, I think I'm going to leave that guy there, and I'm pretty happy with this. I don't really have anything glued down yet, but I think this is the direction I am going to go. All right, and then I have two more pieces that I will have to figure out um, either if I use them or not, uh, but for right now, those are kind of like up in the air. I went back to the stamp set and there are a lot of really awesome sentiments on there, not only for making cards, but I thought for my running layout. Uh, they say things like, don't hurry, be happy, happy trails, hello sunshine, all things that definitely work for my layout. And so I'm going to stamp some of those and use them scattered around with my snails too. Okay, so this one three by three spot, I am using a flip flap for. Um, I'm gonna have some journaling hidden underneath of it. And I've got a shot looking um, um, down the road towards home. And then on the other side, I have a couple of deer that I run into quite a bit when I am on this outdoor run. Um, and so I just stuck that down. And then before I glue this, this part down here that's gonna have my journaling on it, I'm just grabbing a blending brush and kind of rubbing as much of the ink off as I can because that rosy can be a really dark color. And I'm just gonna put a wash of rosy on it before I stamp my journaling lines over the top. And then that piece is ready to go. I do like to cut a slit in my page protector so that that flip flap can sit on the outside of it and it still, um, it still works. So I will link a video down below that shows how I do that to my page protectors. And then these are those fun sentiments. Um, I'm gonna use this one here. I like that it's like long and skinny. I think that will be a good little place for that one snail to sit. It's kind of like a little uh, seat for her, um, the one that's got the, the envelope in her mouth. Um, such a cute snail. And even though these are really about like snail mail, I, I figured, you know, what, I'm gonna leave the envelope stuff in the layout because we have a really long driveway and I often take the mail with me both to the mailbox and coming home on my run. And so that kind of works, that works for me, even though these snails have some envelopes and they're kind of like snail mail. Okay, I'm gonna need that one more spot here just to finish off that visual triangle. I've got a couple other triangles going, but I definitely am gonna put that rainbow and that snail there just to make a third point um, and finish those. And then I feel like I still need something on top of that other uh, four by six photo there because it feels really empty above it. So since I had covered up so much of my original snail stamped paper that I created for this mystery envelope challenge, I'm gonna make some more of my own paper. Um, I'm just grabbing a background stamp from my stash and stamping a couple of dots on one piece of paper. 
And then I'm using my blending brush again just to add a little bit of rosy color to this other piece of white cardstock. And then I'm gonna actually stamp my journaling lines over it to create like a striped pattern. And then I will dovetail both and edge distress them with that rosy ink. And then I've created two of my own pieces of pattern paper in that rosy color that I can have as like little uh, pennant flags coming out of the top of that photo. And I think that's exactly what that spot needed. So I'll just tuck those underneath there and there. Now I've created three pieces of my own paper through stamping and I think that definitely hits the challenge for this month. Okay, another little sneak peek of something that will be available on March 1st. This is a new alphabet thin cut called Outlined Alphabet and it is incredible. So when you run those die cuts through, you actually get two sets of letters. It'll give you the inside piece and it will also give you the outline which of course you could put together if you had run this through twice in two different pieces of color. You could outline your letters with one color and have the inner piece be a different one, but so many different options or you could use them each separately. I am just nuts about this new alphabet thin cut set. So I wanted to use it on my layout today and I decided to do Outdoor Loop as my title because when I enter my runs into the app on my phone, um, I either run inside on the treadmill or I, I do this loop outside. And that's what I call it. I call it my outdoor loop. And so I thought, well, I'm just, I'm just going to title that for my layout here. Um, and as I was trying to get my letters placed, just so I used my T-square ruler to make sure that the O and the P ended up on the same spot um, in the page. And that actually made it a lot easier just to use the ruler in that way. And you can see now I've got everything glued down and my layout is nearly done. I ended up putting a couple more strips of uh, white cardstock down there so that I could have just a little bit more journaling. And then I felt like I needed just a few more tiny touches. So um, this is a little tiny heart from the Operation Smile stamp set and I'm gonna stamp it around uh, my title and then also around a couple of the different snail clusters and I like how it has just that extra little bit of journey colored um, like pop on the layout because it was starting to get a lot of pink. And then I also grabbed a couple of my clear sparkles and I'm going to add a few gems also to my snail clusters. And that will be almost the end because when I finished that, I kind of sat back and looked at it. And I didn't know what else it needed, but I felt like there was a lot of white space. And I did grab a, a black pen and I thought about doing a little journal, like a doodle line. Um, but then I thought, well, I kind of want to edge it in that same journey color. I think, I hope. I was really nervous to do this and like mess it all up at the end, but I just took a breath and went for it. And I grabbed my foam tool and just put a little bit of that journey color all the way around the edge except for on the two inner edges because it is meant to look like it's a continuation from the left hand page to the right page but i think that was definitely the final finishing touch that it needed and i am calling this layout done oh my goodness i you know i loved those snow mice this winter and i think this is my new favorite stamp set i can't wait for everybody to be able to see it on march 1st i'm sorry to tease you a couple of days early but i just couldn't let it sit on my desk anymore i had to play with it um, and it was so much fun and it was perfect for creating uh, this running layout because let's be honest i do kind of move at a snail's pace but um, it's just so fun and summery and they're just so stinking cute. All right, well, this is a mystery envelope challenge. And so I will leave a link in the description box down below where you can check out what all the other ladies in the Makers with Heart group did with their envelope from Amanda. All right, thanks for joining me today. Happy crafting. Bye.